Hello networkers and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer where I will answer one of your questions. And this question has been asked from a couple of you guys and the particular question I want to bring up is posted by Vitalogen, if I pronounced that correctly, I apologize if I mispronounced it. And he asked, I have a question about software defined networking or SDN. I hear that it is now a big game changer in networking in the networking area and a lot of companies are starting to adapt it. Can you tell me briefly the concept behind the SDN and what kind of impact it will make on the networking environment and jobs? And again, this question has come up with other users including Pawan and he asked, do you think SDN will affect network engineer jobs? So it's a very good question. So I have made some presentational slides. So the last weekend I spent some time making the slides and I want to cover that. So I'm gonna talk about the concepts. What is SDN? Where does it fall into the networking areas? And including where it is positioned and what is the impact of SDN in the actual marketplace. So let's go ahead, change the video camera, and let's talk about software-defined networking in reality. The best way to explain what SDN is exactly is to provide a practical example of how software-defined networking works. The best example to illustrate this is with a centralized wireless solution, which is commonly used in all business networks today. In a centralized wireless solution, you will have several access points, lightweight access points, spread out across your network. These are considered as dumb or unintelligent access points, which means they need instructions for what they need to do, basically a configuration. Also on the network, there is a dedicated appliance called a wireless controller with a GUI, a graphical interface. This is the appliance where you would configure all of your wireless networks and the security that is needed. The access points would connect and register to the wireless controller where it would get its configuration for what wireless networks it should announce to wireless clients. So this model makes managing wireless networks easy because we are able to manage our entire wireless infrastructure from a single place. Well, with SDN, it is a very, very similar model. Before I show you how similar SDN is with centralized wireless, let me explain the three type of network planes. This is important when it comes to understanding SDN and what it does behind the scenes. When you're dealing with enterprise network devices like enterprise switches and routers, there are three types of subsystems on that device. There is the control plane, the data plane, and there is the management plane. So any traffic that is directed to the network device itself for management or network services is handled by the control plane. Now, when I say network services, we are talking about the routing, the switching, and the management functions of the network device itself. So for example, the routing protocols like EIGRP or OSPF, when they form neighbors between other devices and building their own routing table. Or protocols like spanning tree, VTP to even trunking. These are all control plane functions which are all processed in software on that network device communicating with other network devices. Now it isn't services that clients or servers on the network will be accessing directly or specifically. These are services that makes it possible for packets to get from point A to point B. It's basically things that happens behind the scenes. So the routing table, for example, that is built by the routing protocol, that will be pushed, that information will be pushed into the data plane and the IP forwarding table that exists there. Now the data plane, on the other hand, is where the actual data is being forwarded. So for the enterprise network devices, this would be forwarding in hardware using ASICs, creating fast performance of moving packets in and out of the network device. Now the management plane is basically the management capabilities and protocols for how the network device can be managed. This can include such services like Telnet, SSH, and even SNMP. 
SDN has three main components which will mirror much of the centralized wireless solution that I referenced before. There is the SDN controller, and this is like the wireless controller, but this is a dedicated appliance or appliances that is responsible for handling the control operation, the control plane operations like routing, switching, management for all network devices in the data center. So the SDN controller manages and views the entire network as one logical switch, basically. Another component is the SDN enabled network devices. These would be a network switch that is SDN enabled. They will be managed from a centralized controller for its control plane operations, but it is also responsible for forwarding data packets based on the decisions of the SDN controller and the APIs. Thus, the last component is the possibility of using application program interfaces or APIs. So the application servers on the network could use API scripts to connect with the SDN controller and it can then be used to influence how traffic flows is provisioned across the network. So SDN is a solution that provides a central location for managing the network intelligence and how data flows through the network. With SDN, the control plane functions, the routing, the switching, the management components from the network switch is moved to a centralized controller. This allows the SDN controller to manage and view the entire network as one logical switch, basically. The SDN controller can provide network programmability. It can provide traffic management based on performance or latency across the network. And it can provide faster provisioning of network services, something called network slicing and network topology segments for specific applications. In a network without SDN, each network device has a control plane to handle all routing and switching functions with the other devices on the network. And there is the data plane where data traffic is being forwarded in hardware. So each of these planes are independently managed by that device. Well, in a network where SDN is used, this is how the SDN components can work together in a data center topology. With SDN, the data center switches are SDN enabled, ready to be controlled by the controller that is connected to the network. The control plane functions of the data center switches are moved to the controller, which now has the capability to control how data is switched through the data center network. So the SDN controller can also connect with many application servers using APIs. These APIs can provide instructions to the SDN controller for how certain applications are routed within the data center based on performance or latency, perhaps. SDN as a solution can be deployed as a software-based solution or as a hardware-based solution. Well, SDN started off and is commonly referenced as a software solution using OpenFlow, which was defined by the Open Networking Forum with the goal of providing network programmability. Well, VMware also supports a model of software-based SDNs. They support that model. Well, the hardware-based option is Cisco's recommended approach, where hardware is more reliable and faster compared to a software-only solution. So Cisco's SDN hardware option is part of an infrastructure that is called the Application Centric Infrastructure or ACI. And ACI involves two main components. The SDN controller component is called the Application Policy Infrastructure Controller or APIC. And there is the SDN enabled data center switches, which are the Cisco Nexus 9000 series switches that is aimed for very large data center networks. Here's the reality and some final points about SDN to take away from this. So SDN is aimed for large data center topologies. Its focus is not with a LAN campus and WAN environments, or even with some large medium to SMB size networks. Also keep in mind that SDN isn't a solution that is widely accepted or deployed within data center networks today. SDN is based upon open standards. 
Yes, Cisco has adapted very strongly to SDN to stay ahead of the networking trends and the recommended offering of SDN is the ACI solution. But there's some examples that I wanna kinda of give you that can illustrate that networking trends can be very strong in the beginning, but they don't pan out over time. So let's say the Nexus 9000 series. So on that switch, for example, it can be enabled in two different modes. It can be enabled in the Nexus OS mode or NXOS or ACI mode. So for example, if you want SDN capabilities within your data center and you have the Nexus 9000 series switches within your large data center, then you can enable it in ACI mode. But if SDN doesn't catch on, no worries, the Nexus 9000 um, switches can still operate in a normal data center environment running in XOS. Well, here's something about that, about catching on. I remember several years ago, um, working on the Cisco Catalyst 6500 series. And you could enable those switches to use a modular iOS. I remember doing that to several of our data center aggregation switches for the Department of Energy. The modular iOS, it allowed us as network engineers to manage a switch running network services that we could restart or stop just like a Windows server in some ways. I remember Cisco bragging about this a lot, but it is something of the past and it is no longer used anymore on those switches. The bottom line, it did not catch on. And Cisco has done this a lot over the years. So ACI and SDN could very much become the same thing. The idea behind SDN does make a lot of sense, but for myself professionally and for other network engineers and sales engineers, we all feel the same thing, that SDN will likely be revamped to something else. However, today, SDN is not clearly defined in how it can be deployed in existing network topologies. Do a Google search for SDN training, for example, and most of the training is based on open source development work and concepts, nothing practical by any means. Furthermore, with SDN and its controller option, there are some risk. Remember, the SDN controller takes control away from the data center switches. Well, if the controller or controllers experience issues, it could create global instability. I've seen issues with the wireless controllers acting haywire and that created a lot of instability for the wireless network. It's those concerns you need to keep in mind when you want to centralize something. Therefore, when it comes to learning SDN, just learn about the concepts and the use cases of SDN. If you do not work on data center networks, then you shouldn't worry about SDN until it is more flushed out and perfected for production use. If you are working on data center networks, or if you have interest in doing so, again, learn about the general concepts and use cases of SDN. But it is still more important to learn about the data center technologies that are used today and deploying them, such as classical ethernet switching, DCI technologies like OTV and Fabric Path, to even storage networking and fiber channel over ethernet. That will provide the best value for learning about data center networking because those technologies are heavily used today in data center networks, not software defined networks. And that will conclude this episode of Ask a Network Engineer. So thank you very much for the great questions. And before we conclude, I want to make another announcement that we just reached 5,000 subscribers on our channel. I think a couple weeks ago, we reached a million views of our video content. So once again, thank you, thank you for your support and continuing to watch our video content and making it valuable for your education. And thank you for watching this video of Software Defined Networking. But as always, I wanna hear from you guys. So post your questions about anything in the networking field or being a network engineer in the comments below and your question will come up in a future episode on this channel. 
So once again, thank you for watching. Please like this video if it has helped you. Please subscribe to our channel and keep us going. And also check out our practical training on our website at rodhub.net. Until next time, keep networking.